rush that you get when you're hucking around a 450 pound motorcycle that is sick. that adrenaline rush or you need something that you can use to push yourself. Just like a lot of them, a lot of other stunt riders, I started out riding just regular sport bikes on the street and then with tickets and stuff like that it gets a little pricey. So we just decided to take it to the parking lot and then Two, three years later, we're doing shows at dealerships, which we used to go to on our stock street bikes. Riding the streets and doing wheelies, and then watching videos. And someone said, "Let's try this." Like Jack said, "Let's try this." And so we built bikes and tried it. My friends started stunting. They all rode the streets. I never rode the streets. Didn't want to get into it. Said I was never going to have a street bike. And one day when they all started stunting, I went and watched it a few times. Bought a bike over the winter, stunted it out, took it to the lot, started crashing it. Not something I'm scared of at all. It's not like you want to get hurt though. I mean, if you're going to try a trick and you know you have a 90% chance of crashing, you're probably going to wait till you're more confident in it. It's more of a waiting till you're ready than just getting hurt. It all depends on the rider and what they plan to do with it, but as far as my bike goes, I, I take the front windshield and headlight out of it just because that's a lot of extra weight up front. And then, then we put on cages, just your actual like side protection and it keeps the engine from hitting the ground when you do drop it and then so we have the cage and then we also have the 12 o'clock bar which is the bar off of the tail that comes out that you can scrape on the ground so then after the cages then we have gearing we put taller gears in the back to make it more torquey so that you can get the slower wheelies and then after that, that's when we add the handbrake setup. And the handbrake is so that you can control the rear brake when your foot is not actually on your foot brake, which normally controls the rear brake. Other than that, it's basically a stock stunt bike with a few added parts and a couple dents. Progression definitely depends on the people that you ride with. You gotta be on top of it and you gotta push it a lot. And that equals injury or broken parts. This is the definition of stunt. So clapped out stunt. Stunting. I think is always going to be a little bit more of an underground sport just because people still view it as kind of hooliganish um, just because there is that little bit of a legal factor when you see people riding wheelies down the street. I think it can be very legal as long as it's close course you keep it off the streets don't go on the highways don't you know don't, don't take the things you learn in the parking lot and do them on the street and to me it'd be perfectly legal. Stunting on the street is definitely illegal, but stunting in a parking lot or a closed course is legal depending on who is viewing it.
we've done shows where the people just sit, arms crossed, blank face. And then we've done shows where people just go nuts. Pretty much they think you're crazy, but maybe they respect it at the same time. It's a hard sport to market because there's not enough people that ride. I think what needs to happen is you just need to find more and more riders to start get into it. And the more people that get into it, the more that it'll, I feel like, market itself. You're going to get help from companies if they have more followers than 20 people. The actual uh, manufacturers like Honda, Kawasaki, the more that they get involved, the more that this sport will be able to evolve. I do it because I love it and that rush that you get from it is irreplaceable. It's a release and it's fun and it's something to push yourself and it's just a big Big pedal bike. <laughs> keep wanting to learn new stuff and keep riding.